All right. Well, welcome everybody to another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. I'm your host, Matt Hines. So excited to have you here. I was wearing just a polo shirt earlier, Dom, and then I had to put on a jacket because the last two days, it was the beginning of spring here in Seattle. We are back to winter uh, for today, cold and rainy, but it doesn't uh, doesn't deter us at all. We keep going. Um, excited that you're all here. If you are watching and listening live on LinkedIn, I'm very excited that you're here with us um, in the middle of your work day, taking a break from some March madness and um, appreciate it very much. If you are joining us live, uh, you have the ability to be part of the show. If you have a question, if you have a comment, I know Dominic, you've got some people from your team that are on, on uh, with us live for cheering and jeering and all the above. Feel free to throw a question or a comment into the LinkedIn comments. We might bring your comment up on screen. We might ask your question live on air. So thanks very much for joining us. And if you're watching or listening on demand, uh, thank you so much for downloading and listening. Every episode of high, of uh, Sales Pipeline Radio, like 400 plus episodes, past, present, and future, always available in uh, salespipelineradio.com. So yeah, today, very, very excited to have joining us today, friend, partner, just a, just a leader in the B2B marketing space, Dominic Colasante. He's the CEO of 2X Marketing. Dominic, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me, Matt. I can't think of a better way to spend 2.30. This is great. <laughs> I, appreciate, I appreciate that. Well, um, like I said, we you know, we try to make these 15, 20 minutes. My my new tagline is, you know, if we can get you to the grocery store and back, you listen to the whole episode, you're good to go. Um, but no, I appreciate you joining. And I think it's um it's an you know, what we when we were brainstorming topics of what to cover here, because there's so much we could we could do. Um, kind of came down to sort of this idea of sort of like how to resource B2B marketing today. Um, cause the, the, the job has changed, the role has changed and it almost seems like this counterpart counterintuitive, like there's a lot of people available today. Like there's too many layoffs happening amongst companies as we record this. And yet it's getting, feels like it's getting harder and harder for people to hire the right roles internally. I'd love to hear a little bit about what you're seeing in the market, both in terms of the evolution of the marketing function, as well as how people are sourcing that work. Yeah. You know, it's, it's funny when, um, um, I used to be a CMO before, and so I, I lived in the uh, in the chair of, uh, of many folks who I think are grappling with this problem today. And you know, when you used to ask marketers uh, about transformation, you would say, "We want to do some innovation. We want to transform. We want to change how marketing runs." Um, the things that they most often talk about in a couple areas. Maybe they talk about technology and the different tech stacks they can bring in, and the different new platforms, even today on the AI side or other types of platforms. Usually the conversation on innovation is around technology, or maybe sometimes it's around, um, you know, the uh, the way that we spend our program dollars, where all the marketing budget goes out the door, making that more efficient. Right. Or sometimes it's around reporting and metrics and how we we track and measure marketing results and changing the three letter acronyms to other things. Um, very seldom does anyone talk about marketing transformation with respect to the organization, to the humans, to the people that do the work all day. And I think that's um, part of uh, sort of what puts us in this moment right now where we've been innovating as marketers for 10 years on so many pieces of marketing, but we've not really innovated on the org, innovated on the humans, the talent, the people that do the work every day. And frankly, it's where marketers spend sometimes more than half of their budget and mm -hmm. more than half of their time um, trying to build that organization. And so I think it's been an area that sort of just never had a lot of attention um, is one of the issues. And I think second is, Things have changed really fast. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we look at you know the the it took ten years or more to get everyone to understand demand generation and how to do that. And there was you know huge amounts of investment and effort around trying to skill marketers that come out of college, mostly generalist marketers, into being B two B focused, which very few schools yeah. will teach, and then right. into demand gen oriented, which no one will teach. And right. so a lot of them have learned that on the, on the in the work world. Um, and then in the last couple of years, the entire game has changed. Um, different technology, different process, different best practices, different books been written. And I just don't think there's been enough um, attention on, on scaling the workforce up as that shift has occurred. I would agree. And I hear, you know, especially the last six to eight months, you talked to a lot of CMOs and they're, they're under budget pressure. And they think about like, if, this, if they're going to simplify it, it's like programs and people. And I would argue, like, if you're going to further differentiate it, you've got sort of media, you've got tools, you've got people. And the investments in the tools have appropriately gone up significantly over the last 
you know, eight to 10 years. But I think too many companies still think, okay, I'm going to buy these tools and they're just going to work themselves. I'm going to buy all these tools. It's going to automate stuff. I'm going to buy tools and it's going to mean I need fewer people to go and do things. That's a, that's a recipe for failure for a lot of organizations. So talk a little bit about how some of the more successful companies are thinking about increase in maturity and complexity of technology and what that means for the people and resources they need to make them work. Yeah. Yeah. I completely agree. And I think that every technology project, technology implementation is, is way bigger than just a technology. It's, it's a change management initiative. It's updating, you know, how your company runs and how the processes come to life and how you do marketing in your core DNA and, and the human element of that, almost like I look at when you're, when you're budgeting a technology investment, you need to budget some human investment to go with it. And most people are pretty good at budgeting for the implementation of it and the yeah. services around that. But then, but then what happens after? How do we use it all day? And as much as we would love you know, everything to automate everything, um, ERP to, didn't put the accountants out of work. They're still here. And I think yeah. there's a lot of, uh, in, in the marketing tech space, a lot of similar parallels where the tech makes us better, but we still need um, uh, people to use it. Uh, I think that there's a couple you know, best practices that I look at where folks really understand how to do that. One is they, they think really uh, thoughtfully about uh, what work do you need to do in your organization versus what work could you buy from the outside? Mm -hmm. And back when I was a CMO and, and other marketer friends of mine, we would sort of tell this narrative, and I think it was true for a little bit, that like marketing is so special and sacred that only we can do it. Um, that it has to be insourced, it has to be full-time people in our headquarters building with a whiteboard nearby because we need to be innovating and collaborating in person. And in the last couple of years, a lot of that's changed. Um, hybrid work, digital work um, has become the norm. Uh, marketing is still very productive, even though it's not in the same location. Um, and I think also this, the job of marketing has changed one from you know, things where there are certain things in the org where you need to become the best in the world at it, and things mm -hmm. that only you can do. Right. And there's probably 60 to 70 percent of the things that marketers do where you just want to implement the best practice. You just want to yeah. follow the best way of doing something. And there's so much different technology and innovation going on that it's hard for you to stay up to date on all those new areas and to constantly be in best practice. And so actually in those areas, I think it's, it's much more appropriate to consider purchasing those labor skills, capabilities from the outside uh, and consuming them and based on the outcomes they produce rather than trying to like run on that house wheel even faster in, um, in trying to create those talent uh, individuals, talented individuals, skill them, certify them, retain them, and, um, and be able to manage an organization that is, is inherently in, in rapid change. Talking today on Sales Pipeline Radio with Dominic Colasante. He's the CEO of 2X Marketing. We're talking about things uh, related to the talent gap and sort of maturing needs of organizations relative to uh, people, process, uh, tools, uh, media. There was a thread. I was just looking for it over here on my, on my Slack Slack up. Uh, a screen uh, there, there, amongst a bunch of CMOs talking about like, you know, what are the things that you outsource? What are, where, where do you to consistently outsource things to sort of agencies and consultants? And some of the common things came up as you would expect as PR, SEO, some content. And I was really surprised that, that I didn't see like RevOps and, and marketing operations more actively on there. And I wonder if it's because people think, okay, well, that's a, that's a core thing. I need to do it internally. But then I think about like at least, and you probably have a better answer to this, but I think of at least four areas like if you've got any level of MarTech tools, whether you just have a standalone Marketo or whether you have a truly integrated stack, there's implementation, there's integration with other tools, there's operating that tool to make it work on a day-to-day -day basis. And then there's ongoing optimization to continue to bring in best practices, right? Today's innovation is just tomorrow's broken status quo. So what are some of the functions to make RevOps work well that people may be forgetting or underserving or under-resourcing today? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head with the last one. That the using the technology and optimizing it and running it as if you know it's it's part of the dna of the org is the thing that always gets forgotten right because it's mm -hmm. all the effort spent on implementation and integration and setting it up but then someone's got to use it and things change and evolve and your company launches new products and you make acquisitions and you decide to pivot in different areas and focus on areas where there's pipeline gaps or new sales teams and the world changes like the day you implement it and go live is the day it starts to go out of date. And um, having you know, an organization uh, or a, a team to support that is such a critical piece that I think is often missed. And, and I look at it that um, you know, when marketers have been outsourcing things for some time, but mm -hmm. I think 
you know, marketers tend to look at it that they're going to outsource either big projects at a point in time where you have a burst of activity needed for something that you don't have resourcing for, or very edge case specialized things like PR, like SEO, like SEM, that are, require very um, uh, experienced and technical resources and to, to, to do those things. But then there's all the stuff in the middle, like the day-to-day -day caring and feeding of the marketing org. Um, and in some ways, it's hard to have generalists do that anymore because there's so much tech involved. There's so much process involved. There's so many different pieces involved. Um, and I've done some research with um, the team at Sixth Sense around trying to measure this like skills gap in the market. And we looked mm -hmm. at, we did a really cool thing where we looked at um, like a real-time supply and demand of talent. We said, let's go on LinkedIn. Let's look at all the job posts that are open. Let's look at all the keywords associated with them, the things that are related to B2B marketing, new age things like intent, like ABM, mm -hmm. like AI, like yeah. Sixth Sense or other. Um, and then let's look at who has a LinkedIn profile that has those keywords. And so we're almost able to get like a real time view of demand of what positions are being recruited for versus supply of what people have those roles. And we found like fascinating things that there are um, for all the new age stuff, there's not enough talent available, which I think we all felt, but to put some numbers around it, we found like some of these things like Marketo would be another where you find for every one position posted, there's really only one resource. So 4,000 positions, 4,000 people, like a one-to-one -one ratio of positions posted and people that have the skill. By the way, most of those people are employed already. So you're, mm -hmm. you can argue huge shortage there. When you look at something that's more mature, email, content, events, mm -hmm. you're like 20 to one ratio of people yeah. that have the skill versus how many positions are open. And I think that tells us that there's not enough people that understand how to do those things, which are really in the center nucleus of how every marketing org operates today. So I want to talk a little bit about how this gets done, because I think there's a lot of companies doing some different things around this um, companies looking to sort of offshore talent to do this. And I, and I want to honestly debunk some things that we learned that we've that maybe some people think about that is that, you know, one, you know, you don't get the same level of talent if you're offshoring or that you, you know, don't have an integrated team because you're halfway around the world and don't have the hours integrated. Um, you know, we just we just a few a couple months ago hired our first uh, BDR as an organization. He's a gentleman from the Philippines, and I've been pleasantly surprised and impressed how well integrated he has become and just the the level of highly educated highly motivated highly capable people all around the world um that you know with technology with the innovations we have today make it so much easier for teams to to coalesce together would love for you to sort of share a little bit more about sort of what you've seen on that work because i know you've got teams be doing this highly successfully in a very seamless integrated way yeah yes i mean at 2x uh the company i'm fortunate to lead We've got 500 people in Kuala Lumpur and Malaysia servicing clients in the US market. Um, 500 people who are B2B new age marketers providing a lot of those skills I mentioned that are in shortage in the US. And I think that it's important to recognize that um, one, um, it's a global world. It's a global talent pool. Um, and there is talent available in many places around the world that you can seamlessly bring into your organization uh, in ways that maybe hadn't existed before. Um, and also important to recognize that your competitors are doing that. And so they're able to pull talent from markets where you may not be if you're not operating a global operating model. Um, and there's also some interesting things around economics that come from that. One's the global world. Two, I think marketing outsourcing and outsourcing in particular has been done in the marketing space probably more often done incorrectly than it's been done correctly. I think I it's really important to, um, to, to appreciate that uh, B2B marketing, very different from B2C and the kind of skills and capabilities and technology and best practices that you have. That B2B marketing, even if it's not a role related to writing and communications, English proficiency is very important. Um, and I think um, up until recently, there haven't been firms that have really prioritized creating talent pools that could be accessible to a US B2B marketer via an offshore market that prioritize B2B, prioritize English proficiency, and prioritize this new age marketing mindset with the technology stack at the core of it um, until recently. And so now those firms exist like 2X um, that are able to support organizations. I mean, I'm really able to almost off ramp them from this talent whiplash that we've had of you know, the great resignation and then the war for talent and then the big downsizing and layoffs. And now like not enough people to do the work you know, by expanding your um, uh, talent acquisition strategy to a global model, um, you almost get an unfair advantage of you're not fighting for over the same people in the U.S. market 
And we found um, in the resources that we have offshore, equivalent skill set, many more certifications, and 70% less on the economic. And it's hard to really um, unsee it once you've experienced that and, and really appreciate that a lot of marketing work can get done in a very different way. Well, and it, it's not just the economics, right? I think a lot of people think, oh, if I outsource this, then it's going to be that much less expensive. It's, yes, yeah. Currently, you can outsource things in Southeast Asia, and you know, dollar for dollar, you're going to get, you're going to pay, you're going to pay less. However, the I think that is one of many benefits, and maybe a secondary benefit to the idea that you have some continuity of your team. You have people that are motivated and loyal are going to stick around. You have people where, I mean, I, our purpose as a business is to positively impact careers and lives by enabling work that matters. And I've seen firsthand through our BDR, through the administrator of a professional organization I'm in that's also in the Philippines. I mean, it's like she, she's she's working our hours. Like she's, 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 she might as well. I mean, you might as well be across the cross country, across the world next door if we're working mostly through Zoom. It's just the level of professionalism and seamlessness. It's just it's, it condenses the world in a way that just you think about the unlimited potential that creates. And when you can break, break down those barriers and especially say we can do this in a seamless way, we can do this with 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 hi highly educated motivated people where it's seamlessly integrated the organization with some continuity that has i mean yes economics aside that is also pretty exciting stuff yeah i'll give you another point on the continuity too and that um so many organizations and marketing leaders in particular spend a huge amount of their job maintaining hiring replacing talent and so they're sort yep. of on this constant cycle of vacant roles and interviewing and i have one of our clients had a problem with marketo talent they had this revolving door of Marketo talent and they could never keep Marketo people in the job. And so, and the problem is if those Marketo people weren't there, they weren't doing marketing. They weren't right. sending email, they weren't automating their engine, they weren't routing leads, things like that. Um, and so one of the great things about bringing on a vendor versus trying to do it yourself is um, if a vendor has a resource turnover, they're accountable to give you a new resource. They're going to overlap. They're going to find the new person. They're going to train that new person. They're going to drop that new person in. And almost like you, remove yourself from having to worry about replacing and retaining talent. Uh, and there's a lot of roles in the organization, frankly, that marketers really need that are very important, that are individual contributor roles that sometimes just don't have a career path that, you know, folks, particularly, um, you know, highly motivated, really, you know, high energy people want to come and do those jobs and they want to be promoted up or promoted out in some, something else, but you need stability in those roles. And it's really hard when you're running your org, to make sure those people always have like interesting things to work on and you're trying to stretch them and you end up spending all this time trying to develop that talent that's an important thing to do as a as a human being but sometimes it's difficult to do as a leader when you just need the emails to be tested you just need mm -hmm. the stuff to be routed you just need the data to be integrated you just need spreadsheets cleaned up and pulled you just need that execution work to be stable and sustainable and another way to get out of the business having to worry about that is to have someone do it for you and provide a service around it Totally agree. Well, wrap it up here with Dominic Colasante. He's the CEO of 2X Marketing. Uh, put a couple links up to some work that he's done. Uh, go to 2x.marketing to check out some of that. Great blog. You get, uh, get some of his uh, research with Sixth Sense as well. Um, I mean, I don't see this abating, Dominic. I think, you know, as we record this, sort of, you know, there's sort of this weird talent crunch of finding the right people. Um, you know, I think it's getting harder and harder to find the right people, the right price here in the US. But even as we get into, you know, past the current economic conditions into a more, I guess, maybe sugar rush area era of the market again, I think that's just going to exacerbate this problem. It's just going to get more people hiring, more people looking for the same people, while more companies are now being expected to do more um, as they go about that. And so I think that in terms of asking you about like, what do you see moving forward? Curious, does that align with what you're seeing? Or, you know, what are you experiencing with your clients? Yeah, you know, it's exactly right. I look at the current environment, a little bit of austerity, a little bit of uh, hesitation to do things, a little bit mm -hmm. of um, concern around making big bets and hiring and transforming. It's the current environment we're in. In some ways, it looks very similar to what we saw in the back half of 2020. There was a different thing going on that caused that, but it was the same amount of hesitation um, and um, uh, you know, caution in making decisions. What we know is what happened in 2021 after, because everyone sort of came out of the groundhog hole and said, time to invest in marketing because the solution to most problems in business are more revenue. And if we dial down, you dial up the marketing lever and spend more money on marketing and, and, and drive more activity, we're gonna have more results. And that wave is coming. That's what follows these waves that we're in right now. 
And the problem mm -hmm. is when that wave comes, you're going to have another war for talent. You're going to have another great resignation when people are going to move around and recruiting agencies are going to tell everyone they can get 30% more by changing jobs. You're going to have more instability. And I think this really time, this problem's not going away. There's no one really working on developing talent of the future in the B2B new age marketing world. Um, it's not going to go away. And so I think the only choice is to think about in this moment, how do you change the operating model? How do you build a better structure um, where you de-risk yourself from some of those labor dynamics and build something that's more flexible, agile, cost-effective, and gives you access to talent that you don't have? That's the only choice you have right now, I think. I would agree. I would agree. And, and for companies that are sort of saying, well, you know, we're resource constrained. Well, we're going to got to kind of watch where we are. Companies that succeed out of markets like this are those that accelerate through the curve. And the ones that accelerate through the curve have higher, better confidence in their plan moving forward. And many times that means they're doing scenario planning right now. So if you assume that in the second half of this year, beginning of 2024, whatever your timing is, you're going to want to hit the gas pedal on your business, in your market, in your industry. Like you can gnash your teeth about where things are now, or you can be ready when your CFO says go. And so highly encourage everyone to start thinking about what is it going to take if we're asked to accelerate results? What is it going to take from a people, from a program, from a process standpoint, uh, and just be ready for that. So Dominic, I know people can find you on LinkedIn, uh, 2x.marketing to learn more about the business, get a lot more of your content. Where else should people check you out? That's it, LinkedIn and uh, our website. That's, that's where you find me most often. Clean and simple. All right. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you to Scott, to Nick, to Maria, to a number of others that are watching, listening, chiming in. Uh, we'll be here again next week, 1130 Pacific, 230 Eastern. Thanks again to our guest, Dominic Colasante, for joining us today. My name is Matt Hines. We'll see you next week. Another episode of Sales Pipeline Radio. Take care. 